and thank you for joining me today. My name is Patty Starr and my YouTube channel is Patty Starr Supernatural Chronicles. Um, tonight I want to talk a little bit about one of the most exciting EVPs that I think I've uh, recorded. Uh, it's not the best but it is one of the best and uh, at the time uh, I was able to get this EVP at an establishment called the Talbot Tavern. Now back in 1995, I moved to Bardstown, Kentucky. Um, I wanted to get closer to my sister and she had been living here for a few years, so I decided to make the big move. Now when I got to Bardstown, I was totally thrilled at this little town because it was almost like you went back in time. I'm not kidding. I remember like one of the first times I went downtown and I pulled up to get out of the car. Um, I looked before I crossed the street and here comes a stagecoach uh, driven by a driver with a cowboy hat on. I thought, what? Um, and that happens to be Jonesy's uh, stagecoach ride. Um, and uh, that's a pretty, pretty popular uh, attraction in Bardstown. And then I progressed on to the, uh, the uh, tourist center. And when I got to the tourist center and opened the door, out walks this gentleman, two ladies, and they're dressed in these long flowing gowns. And, and the guy, you know, he, I looked at them and it was like they were from the 1800s. Well, I found out that they were part of the actors for the Stephen Foster story that happens in Bardstown at the amphitheater uh, from June until August. Um, and then I walked on down the street a couple of blocks and I saw this old um, uh, train engine and it looked like it was parked up beside a museum. And as I got closer and started reading the signs, it was a 1940 R.J. Cohen, um, or Cohen, I think it was, um, train. And what they do, it was called the dinner train. And you go on this dinner train and you have a full course, I think it's like a seven course meal. And as you're having your meal, you're listening to the old 40 tunes and you're going in, uh, around some of the back areas of Bardstown. Um, oh, and then to, it, to make matters even more spectacular is I just turned the corner and, and walked a couple of more blocks and I saw this huge museum. It said the Civil War Museum. It also included the Woman's Museum. And I got to looking and down the hill, there was a complete village from the uh, 1800s. Some of the buildings I think were even built in the 1700s where they had taken down some old buildings across Kentucky and brought them here to this place where you could go and it had like a, an old tavern, a church, a blacksmith. Um, I think there are like uh, maybe 10 or 12 buildings. And then there was this beautiful water mill there um, that was being, uh, you know, energy created from the, from the water uh, going through the water mill. Um, and so I was at that point very excited that I had moved to Bardstown. So I go into one of the very first buildings and it was called the Talbot Tavern. And I saw on the door it advertised that it um, was established in 1779. So when I walked in, being the sensitive that I am, I started, whoa, really picking up thinking, wow, I bet this place is haunted. And sure enough, when I got my meal there and I was talking with some of the servers, I did find out, oh, they said, oh, yes, ma'am, this place is really haunted. And then they would say, yeah, there's a little girl here. There's a, a lady in white. There's always a lady in white, but you know. And so I got pretty excited. I went home that day and I thought to myself, you know what, I'm gonna get a job there. I am going to work at that tavern and I'm going to learn as much as I can about the ghost there. So I applied and believe it or not, I got a job there 
And later on, I, I actually was working in the office. Later on, just a few months down the road, the general manager there was leaving and I approached the owners because I'd had that kind of, um, that kind of experience in my life in, in management, retail management. And uh, I became the general manager to the Talbot Tavern. I was uh, so blessed uh, and learned so much by working in that tavern, not only about the restaurant business and the innkeeping business, but also the business of ghosts. Um, I had encounter after encounter that were so good. I felt like I had a actually seen Jesse James. I, l I learned later on, uh, I got a phone call from a former uh, manager and she said, I need to meet with you because I want to tell you my stories about Jesse James, how she had seen him and what she had seen him do. And uh, then I started having experiences with Jesse uh, down the hallway, knocking on my door and going to my door. Nobody there, my office door. And then when I'd close the door, I'd hear this laughter. This was a common thing that Jesse would do. So um, I started to get familiar with some of these spirits and ghosts. And, and I could talk to them. And I would come back to work sometimes late in the evening. And I would take pictures of some of the areas to see if I could get apparitions or energy, shadow people. Uh, I would bring my recorder too sometimes in my office and let it run while I'm doing paperwork just to see if I would get an EVP, electronic voice phenomena. Well, I worked there for several years and then in 1998, the Talbert Tavern caught on fire. It was the most horrible day for me. I remember five o'clock in the morning, my phone ring. I answer the phone and it's the fire department. And they say to me, we're the fire department, the tavern's on fire and we need to know how many people you have staying there. We wanna make sure that we've gotten everybody out. So I told them how many were there. I get in my car and I ride down and I just collapse on the street crying because I'm watching this beautiful, very old building just go up in flames. It just, it was very heartbreaking. That building made it in Ripley's, believe it or not, because it had not been closed in 250 years. Each time that it changed hands with an owner, it did remain open. So it made it in Ripley's, believe it or not, as one of the oldest establishments that had never been closed in over 250 years. Now it would be closed. What was fortunate for me, I was able to stay on and continue to be the manager at the Talbert Tavern, even though it was not open. So I had a lot of things planned out for me to go in the evening when it was quiet and be go through all of these rooms that were left, these places, because I wanted to make sure that the ghosts were still there. And if they were, if they would communicate with me in the manner that they did before the fire. So I had a few friends, I think I had five or six all together, called them up and I asked them, if they would go with me to do these investigations. Now these, these guys that went with me were awesome. They were always looking for a good time. They were always laughing and having fun. And they teased me quite a bit, but that's okay, because I love that. So one night, we decide to get together and do this investigation. Now, when we would do our investigations back in 1995, 96, 97, and now it's 1998. Um, my ghost hunting equipment was quite crude. In other words, I had an outdoor thermometer that I would take with me and actually watch it uh, elevate or if it would go higher or lower, and then I would record that. 
I would also take a compass. And the reason that I had a compass is if there was an electromagnetic disturbance, the needle would start to spin. So I would have that with me wherever, as I'm walking around, just in case I got like an uh, interruption within the magnetic field. I also had um, uh, the analog video recorder and the analog audio uh, recorders. And then I had, of course, the analog cameras uh, that we took pictures with. So ghost hunting for me back then was really boring because each of my friends, I would give them an assignment. This one person would have to sit and watch the thermometer or as we walked around, have the thermometer just in case, got a flashlight on the thermometer just in case there was a spike. And then um, somebody would, you know, be checking the, the uh, compass holding it and listening because you could kind of hear it. It was, I had a very, very old compass and it would kind of clink when it would move. And uh, so we decided on this particular night, this was after the fire, that we would put two or three of the audio recorders in the room on one part of the building and then we would go to the other part of the building because we did not want our voices to be picked up by the recorders. And uh, then we would walk around and film. At one point, we got uh, a shadow person. This was uh, March of 1999, and it happened to fall on a blue moon. And uh, we were there. I'm going to include that little clip um, in this story so you can see that. It was my first time actually catching a shadow person that walked down the hall. And so we were able to, to capture that. But um, when we, we were there that night for a couple of hours, then we went through and we started gathering up all of our equipment. And then I went home. And uh, then the next day I got up and I put my earphones on. And for hours, <clears throat> I started listening to the audio recorders to see if we got anybody that would come through and talk with us. Um, I'm ironing my clothes, you know, and I'm listening. I try to, I can multitask. I'm real good at that. And then all of a sudden in my earphones, I heard this voice come through and it was very fast. And it said, welcome to the dab and have a seat. And I was like, whoa. And I played it back and it said, welcome to the dab and I'll seat you. And I said, oh my God, what is it saying? So I had some friends down at the radio station and I decided to call them and I asked them if I brought that tape down, if they would run it through that audio equipment that they have there to see if we could just slow it down slow enough so we could see or we could hear what the EVP said. So we slowed it down and sure enough, we got a woman that came through, and she said, Welcome to the Talbot. I will seat you. Oh, my gosh. That was so awesome. But she said something that uh, caught my attention. She said, Welcome to the Talbot. She did not say, Welcome to the Tavern. Hmm, I thought. When I went back, into my research, I learned that in 1886, George Talbot, after marrying Annie Spaulding, they decided to buy the Newman House. Now, the Newman House, of course, is the name before the Talbot Hotel. So, what happened was um, they moved in, they raised a family. As a matter of fact, they had 12 children. Now, that's a lot of children right there at the beginning. But see, Annie had three sets of twins. Um, unfortunately, you know, back then, the children, a lot of the children didn't make it in the pioneer days because they did not have the vaccines from all of the deadly uh, diseases that children would get. So all in all, she only had five children to make it to adulthood. 
Now they had the Talbot there, and uh, but at the time that they ran it, it was still known as the Newman House. Then, in 1812, George died. Now, at this point, Annie decided with her older children that they would stay there and continue to run the inn and the restaurant for a few more years, which they did for four years. Then, in 1916, Annie decided it was time to retire. So, she wanted to sell the Talbot, uh, I mean the Newman House. But, when George died in 1912, in his honor, Annie decided to change the name to the Talbot Hotel. So, in 1916, when she decided to retire, she made a deal with T.D. Bean, and she sold her Talbot Hotel to him. Now, T.D. Bean was the brother of Jim Bean, and T.D. Bean changed the name to the Talbot Tavern. Now, what was so important about that EVP was that when she said, Welcome to the Talbot, how I will seat you, I got to thinking about the fact that she did not refer to it as the Tavern. So when I did a little more research, I found out that when George Talbot was a young boy, one of his favorite uncles, um, got into a brawl in a pub after drinking. It ended up that his uncle was killed. And it bothered him so much as a child, he vowed that when he grew up, he would never drink alcohol and he would never permit anyone in his family or business to have alcohol. So then I got to thinking, then maybe that voice, welcome to the Talbot, would be in that time period when only Annie was there. Because before that, it was the Newman House before George died. And then after Annie left, it became the Talbot Tavern. So everybody nowadays always refers to the Talbot Tavern as just the tavern. You know, when we're in town, people would say, let's go to the tavern. Let's eat at the tavern. Let's have fun at the tavern. So that was a wonderful clue that Annie gave me when she said, welcome to the Talbot. I will seat you. And so what I'd like to do, I have gone into the computer and I have pulled the voice. And uh, if you'll listen, you can understand, welcome to the Talbot, very clearly. I will seat you, kind of fades off. But you can still make out that it's Annie there, happily greeting you to the Talbot. And she is going to seat you. So here we go. <laughs> I'll play it again. Welcome to the Talbot. I will seat you. I was so excited and so thrilled the day that I got this uh, EVP. It was uh, another funny thing about it is that uh, after I got it and was pretty sure that that was a true EVP, I contacted my friend Melody. And she was always our fun maker. She was always our prankster. She was always the one to make our group laugh. So I asked her, I said, I just want to make sure that you did not, in, in, in playing with me, that you did not walk up to that recorder and say that. And she was like, oh my gosh, I would never do that. I didn't do that. And she was so excited also 
for the fact that we had gotten this extraordinary EVP. And again, like a lot of my EVPs, I always get such good messages. I tell people, you've heard me say it before, I've learned more about life from the dead than I have the living. And uh, with that, um, at one point, uh, I was contacted by My Ghost Story, and they asked if uh, I had someone that would like to come with me uh, to do the ghost story. Now, on the ghost story, we did mostly Jesse James, but we had to send an interview tape in. In our interview tape, we covered the story about Annie and when she asked, or when she said, Welcome to the Talbot. I will seat you. So anyway, that's my story tonight. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you've never subscribed, I hope you'll like and subscribe and click on that icon bell so it will let you know when the next uh, episode is coming. And we're going to try, I hope, to start doing at least one a week. I know that's a lot, but I've got enough information. I've got enough storytelling. I've got enough videos and EVPs for over the last 40 years that will be really good that I can share with you guys. And I'm so excited to have this time with you. So again, welcome and goodbye. And I hope you had a really good time.